life. Life is a disease. A millennium ago, a supreme necromancer was on the verge of conquering the world. But you know what they say about best laid plans. Hmm? Inevitably, heroes shall emerge. So, I was made dead. Again. But what does death really mean for somebody who has mastered it? Hmm? Boredom. An eternity to ponder my errors and how close I came to victory. I am a mortal. But when this world ends, even I will know oblivion. And so, I ask myself, will I be given another chance to rise before it happens? Another chance to fulfill my ambition? It seems that fate has smiled after all. Eratus, Lord of the Dead. Disclaimer. So if they die, don't save scum. Just continue onwards. Make more. I hope the volume is good. Oh, I like the way that the screen it like moves with the mouse. Very nice. Okay, let's start this again. New game. Okay. Finish the game on tutorial After a millennia of imprisonment, and the miners gathered around his tomb, still do not know the mortal danger they have stolen upon. Their bodies will lay the foundation for an army of the dead that will conquer this world. Rise! Arise, my minions! Rise and conquer the world! Okay, each minion has five basic abilities and one ultimate ability. To use an ultimate ability, you need a special resource called Rad. Minions and enemies can use certain abilities only from specific positions with specific targets. I don't want 
to fight, she says. Uh... Oh, so this is like the Terran Order. Banshee. Screaming. Moves the target to a random position, so we can just shuffle. Okay. No! Stance. Whenever an enemy moves, the Banshee deals 50% uh, stress damage to it. Okay. Restores the target to full sanity and gives Aratus mana equal to 20% of their stored sanity. Okay. All minions gain 14 dread for their next action. Doesn't stack. Okay. Soprano. Uh, stress attack deals 8, uh, eight stress damage. All enemies lose 6 attack for their next action. Okay. Doesn't stack. Alright. How? Target skips their next turn. That cost. I'm assuming that that's wrath, right? Banshee, dr Banshee draws her strength from one simple emotion. Fear. In truth, the Banshee feels many times the fear felt... Oh, okay. Had she the ability, she would run away from each battle in blind terror, but necromancers have long since employed additional bindings to keep that from happening. Interesting that banshees feel more fear than their victims. Ectoplasm, dust, rags, heart. Okay. Uh... Oh, okay. We can read about everything. Skeleton, a fairly unimpressive warrior. Why does everybody shit on skeletons in video games? Skeletons are fucking awesome, man. But everybody always acts like they're just so mediocre and so shit. But skeletons are... good. Kinda. Whose one standout characteristic is their utter mediocrity. While often they make up the backbone, pun intended, of, the, of most undead armies, skeletons are so boring that they are never really acknowledged by their creators or their enemies. Why does everybody got a shit on skeletons? I mean, they, they've got weapons, shields, armor, bones. Now, hell, they even got a song like Spooky Scary Skeletons, but no. No, we got a shit on the skeleton. The skeleton is immune to all buffs and debuffs. Unassuming strike. So we can just we can slap. And it ignores armor, okay. Physical attack interrupts stances. And I'm guessing that arrow is moving forward. Show them their place. And it shoves them back twice. So it can knock the front line to the back and then Restore the skeleton to his frontline position. Okay. Astounding fortitude stance. Marks a minion has 100% chance to redirect any attack that targets the marked minion to itself. Gains 12 armor and 12 resistance until the next action. Ooh. So he can protect some. Embrace Mediocrity Buff Target gains 4 armor, 4 resistance until the end, end of the battle Okay oh, These are like upgrades and shit I guess I'll read the upgrades later 
but it's better to understand the basics of the game. Physical attack. Attacks twice, dealing 50% damage per attack. Performs additional attacks for each buff on the target. dealing 65% damage per attack. Vorpal Smite. Attacks twice, dealing 50% damage per attack. Forms an additional 4% chance to immediately kill the target? Bro! I can imagine you stack like 30 debuffs on an enemy and you just go to town on them ass cheeks, alright? Just fucking... Da -da 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 -da. We're, we're duplicating small strikes here. And even if it's not, imagine if you had like three skeletons and somebody to just cast a bunch of debuffs on the enemies every turn. Okay, shield banger, stress attack, stresses all enemies. Okay. Enemies will either go insane or become inspired. Creepy clank. Removes all buffs from the targets. Mm. Six initiative? <laughs> oh god, excuse me. So what's the initiative of our... Oh, five. So our skeleton is faster. Smite. Unassuming strike. Interrupt stances. So what about these guys? Miners are alchemically infused convicts who can be found working in the tunnels beneath the castle. Potions they are fed give them a vast increase in strength at the cost of reduced intellect and lifespan. Ooh. The ruling human aristocracy is more than willing to supply the dwarves with captives for their experiments as long as they receive a share of the profits. That's fucked. A hunky? His mama always told him to stop fighting the neighbor's boys and instead listen to his teacher. But he knew better. She also told him to ask the blacksmith for, for, for forgiveness so that he might one day make her boy his apprentice. But the boy already had other plans. Why work hard when you can get nowhere with honest labor? But mama did have one bit of wisdom that this lad made sure to follow. Undead can't stand light. It instantly turns them to ash. So when the undead invasion began, Hunky took the best possible job for the occasion. Lantern bearer. Let the others wield their swords and bows. He will follow the advice of his wise mother and use the most effective weapon possible. Hmm. He's probably going to be really effective against lantern vampires or some shit. Anyways... Neither one of these dudes have armor, right? You've got less health, so we're gonna put the smack attack on you. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, smack attack. Physical damage and magic damage that reduce the target's vigor. Igniting deals instant magic damage to the target and true damage at the start of their turn. So it's not reduced by armor, I'm guessing. Stress damage decreases the sanity of the target. Cursing a target will deal stress damage at the start of its turn. Critical hits by your minions decrease enemy sanity. Enemy critical hits will increase it. Uh, so what, this guy's got very little sanity. The 
loss of sanity in combat can lead to various consequences. Insanity, a negative effect that weakens the enemy. Inspiration, a positive effect that strengthens the enemy. Death. Receiving any amount of stress damage while at zero sanity can lead to instantaneous death. Flee from combat at low levels of sanity an enemy on the outermost position of the combat row has a chance to flee from combat. So, oh, so only the back row guy can. Alright, well. One by one, life vanishes from this world. Unlucky. Minus 15 luck. Minus 15 accuracy. Minus 15 evasion. That's what it feels like to play Darkest Dungeon. So, since he's unlucky, that should increase our chance to just fucking get a crit, right? So it'd be better to go for more hits, right? My kingdom comes! Skeleton bro just destroyed them both himself. Alright. Hearts, dust, bones, skulls. Create any two minions. Uh, creation. Okay. Creating minions. After gathering parts from his defeated foes, Eratus can create new minions for his army. Using parts of uncommon, rare, or legendary quality increases the amount of stat points created of the created minion. With time, Eratus will acquire new minion recipes as well as various combat tactics. Oh, boy, we got the fucking zombie. Alright, before Eratus came along, zombies were considered a little more than fodder troop by other necromancer. It took a true visionary to realize that a mindless mass of undead muscle can be used for more than simply bashing the heads of mortals. With a bit of technological assistance, these rotting hulks were turned into mobile artillery, capable of carrying and shooting cannons that would normally need several humans to operate. This sounds like something that would make Mr. Torg proud, so... Let's make a zombie. Feature. Ignores armor and resistance? Zombie? They will be expecting cannon fodder, but I will give them cannons instead. <laughs> okay, what we got here? trade. Dark Knight can't be critically hit. Hmm, tanky. That also means they can't gain back their sanity from critically hitting this guy, right? Werewolf. At the start of each turn, restores 20 vigor. Uh... I'm thinking I might... The Banshee's all about stress, which is cool, but... I don't know. Hold on. Uh, how do I get back to the minion menu? Minions. Ah, uh, there we go. Creation. Uh... Bride of Aratus. A design fashioned by the arch-necromancer himself. 
The bride uses only the best part to raise a deadly archer with an unhealthy love for her creator. Said love is then channeled into a burning desire to shoot out the eyes of anything that might try to get close to the one she worships. Okay. Chest piercer. Critical hit would deal 175% damage. Flames of love. Set a target on fire for two turns, dealing 35% damage, which is 8 to 10 per turn. Okay. Overwatch stance. Whenever an enemy moves, deal 60% physical damage to it. Okay. Think of him. Buff. The bride gains 10 attack and 10 dread until the battle ends. Okay. Warning shot. Moves back 3. Stress attack. Interrupt stances. Hmm, okay, so the Bride can do either stress or straight-up physical damage, right? She deals a lot of physical damage, though, but this stress attack seems that she could stay at the very back all the time and just constantly stress out whomever. Oh, and it seems that it moves the target, too. Inflicts a critical hit. Physical attack, 75% damage. I see that it seems that you get additional statistics here too, so let's look at the zombie and see what he kind of position he should be in. Because a skeleton boy, he likes being at the front. Unassuming strikes, uh, smiting. So what's, what's uh, Zombie Boy got? Magic attack. I'm gonna assume that that's HP damage, because I don't see the, st the stress skull. Buckshot. Physical attack deals 60%, 8 to 10. Damage to two enemies in chosen position. And the next two positions in line. Wait, so... It deals... 60% Oh, to enemies on the chosen position. Okay, so if I select rank 2, it hits rank 3 and 4. But if I select rank 1, it hits 2 and 3. Okay, got it. Boy, he has a lot of resistance. Chunky boy, but only 3 initiatives, so he's a bit slow. Igniting mixture. Uh, four to four. It deals damage to the enemy on, and the next position in line. So I can hit ranks three and four, two and three, and one and two. So it sets them on fire. More powder. Zombie gains 100% damage for its next attack. Ooh. That would increase the igniting mixture, right? Because it says 50% of your attack, so I'm going to assume yes. Stance. At the start of its next turn, the zombie attacks four times, each attack dealing 60% damage, physical damage to a random remaining enemy. This attack does not consume an action. So it's like reserving your attack until the next turn if you're at the back line. Start of the next turn, zombie attacks four times. Oh, this is physical damage, so it changes it to magic damage. Interesting. Four time, it attacks four times each attack, dealing 75% physical damage to a random enemy. Okay. 
Okay. So what is this? Cannonball. 60 Wrath. 200% physical attack damage. And he gets moved backwards. Light Caliber. Reinforce 50. the bone, strengthen the flesh, blacken the spirit. Yeah. Hex Ball. Stress Attack. Target loses 25 luck, 25 accuracy, and 25 evasion for two turns. <laughs> oh. Negative luck on the target increases the luck of the attacker. Oh, okay, good. So, even negative luck uh, is bad for you. Okay, so if the enemy's evasion is zero, I don't need more than 100. But I'm guessing that I'm going to need over 100 to make sure that I can hit every time. So I'm going to remember that. Uh, more powder. Block and ward seems to be very important. Uh, I think that's when they... It's like guard tokens for target's dungeon. But yeah, this guy seems like he could be anywhere. He could be at the back line at rank 3, and then he could be at the front line. But most of his stuff prefers front line. So I guess I'll put him in position 2. And then if he gets pushed to the back, he can, we can just use Bombardment, and he'll just blast the shit out of the enemies. I'd imagine that the damage wouldn't be very effective when there's a lot of enemies alive, but what I also imagine is I'd shoot with Cannonball and then just fucking blast the shit out of them, and then there's only one or two guys left, and we'll just shoot them up that way. Okay, uh... Wraith. Despite its seeming simplicity of this minion, it summoning has been prohibited by the Necromancer's Guild since the dawn of history. Not even Aretas remembers the reason for this decree, but there are dark rumors surrounding this particular summoning. It is said that the very first necromancer created this minion as a vessel for his reaver, or that the soul that answers the necromancer's call comes not from the afterlife, but a much more alien space. Nobody seemed to have had the courage to put these theories to the test, or maybe those that did never survived the process. Still, the guild has been nothing but ruins for millennia. It is now up to Eratus to decide what to do with this knowledge. <sighs> Let's see what the Wraith does for abilities. So, Cold Grasp, magic damage. Target cannot move during their next turn. So if we want to stop something from moving around, that's what we could do. Necrotic Wind. Stress attack. Removes all buffs from the target. Target loses initiative. One uh, for one turn. There's a lot of curse stress damage going on here. 30% uh, enemies on a chosen position in the next in line. Curses two targets. No, it curses targets for two turns. Okay, so lots of stacking curse damage. Evolution. 12 dread until the end of combat, eh? Summons a concealing cloud for two rounds. This thing starts with two block and two ward. That's pretty cool. Terror Wave. All opponents randomly swap positions. Uh, that can trigger a lot of shit with a Banshee. Is there any position... Okay, so... Uh, Wraith might not be the way to go. Uh, if we're just gonna destroy things and stomp them. So... And, nor will the Banshee, actually. So maybe we can, I don't know, what's the Dark Knight got going on here? 
Heartless Slash. Perfection takes time and proper ingredients. Heartless Slash deals damage equal to 80% of the sum of the knight's armor and resistance. So that's 8. No, it deals additional damage. So, uh, yeah, so it's 13. Oh, okay. Armor and resistance. So it's magic and physical resist. Oh, shit. There we go. Um, hollow Stair Stress Attack deals additional dread for each buff or debuff on the target. Eratus gains 6 mana and 6 wrath. Removes all debuffs from the Dark Knight. Okay. He can really just erase the debuffs on himself. Stance. Each time an enemy receives a buff, Dark Knight deals 60 stress damage to it. Oh, it's a stance. Uh, he can move forward 3 back to the front line. Physical attack deals 80% 10 to 12 damage to enemies on the ch chosen position and the next position in line. Hmm. Abyssal Hunger. All enemies lose 12 vigor and the Dark Knight receives recovers an amount of vigor equal to the damage dealt. Well, uh, I guess Dark Knight, but let's check the werewolf out after we read the description. A manifestation of the living void contained in a vessel of knightly armor. These necromantic soldiers are often seen leading the armies of undead against civilizations of mortals. Where they learn the skill to do battle and wage war is unknown, but all of them despise existence and seek to reduce everything to nothing. Werewolves. Actually, let's see the stats of the Dark Knight. He doesn't start with any block and board. And it doesn't seem like he can get the upgrade to start with any. The Banshee can. What about the zombie? No? Bride? The Bride can start with some. So, not every character can upgrade the same stats, it seems. Okay. Uh, let's look at some abilities of the werewolf. Uh, the guards of the underground prison used to hound prisoners for fun. It was particularly fashionable to bet on which of the poor souls would be torn apart first by the raging war dogs. But a flesh-based diet, however nutritious, was not healthy for creature for the creatures and some of them died from gluttony well now the pet cemetery serves the necromancer who revives the ugly beasts craving to tear out their former master's throats okay swing attacks twice dealing 50 percent damage per attack okay curse of madness buff werewolf receives 15 luck and 15 critical hit strength for two turns other minions receive 10 luck and 10% critical strength for two turns. Doesn't stack, okay. Hunting down. Uh, physical attack. Deals 150% for 39 to 44 damage. Target loses all armor and resistance until the battle ends. And that's tear up, you know, you can only do that at position one. And it ignores block. So you can just tear up somebody's armor. Ambush. At the beginning of it, his next action, the werewolf deals 300% 300 
physical damage to any enemy at the marked position and moves to the to a first position. You have the honor of receiving my personal touch. <laughs> uh, attack doesn't spend an action. The werewolf doesn't miss this attack. One target per round. Buff. Starting the next round, the werewolf receives an extra action for two turns. Uh, for three turns, okay. An extra action deals 25% more damage. 75 wrath for that. Oh, this, is, this also costs wrath. Ambush. Okay. So the werewolf needs a lot of wrath. I do realize that some enemies might be stronger or weaker for stress damage, and the bride can kind of round out our team, while the banshee will just focus on stressing the weak-minded enemies, I guess, and when she's done, she'll just spam soprano, I suppose. Go with the bride of Aratus. Only for me. I crafted it that way. Alright, let's start the dungeon. Map. The kingdom had a need of the vast riches buried underneath the castle. Great veins of iron that promised to fuel conquest after conquest, along with the ancient artifacts from a long forgotten age. The dwarves were eager to offer their services in this project, bringing their untested mining equipment and experimental concoctions for promises of wealth. They only needed bodies that could obey, and that the humans could provide. With dungeons filled to the brim with both criminals and rebels, there was no shortage of slaves to work these mines. Drugs were used to keep them docile as they dug ever deeper, year after year, unaware of the mortal danger that awaited them below. Alright. Alright, so I know that some of these enemies, some enemies possess unique features that either strengthen or weaken them. So do the features of your minions and your enemies so that you can fight them more effectively. Uh, the chance of enemies to escape increases by 2% each turn and until it reaches 10%. Oh, okay, so the Banshee just causes people to leave the battle. 80 life, 80 sanity. One block, one ward. When the Taskmaster dies, his allies recover 30 sanity. <laughs> So the miner, we're gonna break his mind, and then the hunky, we're gonna chunky, I guess. Skeletons got ten luck. Let's go for a crit. No crits. Warning shot. What's our chances to hit? 115 accuracy? He's got zero evasion, so... Become part of the breathless tide. Alright, well he's dead. Uh, let's look at this new enemy, Taskmaster, huh? Taskmasters are tasked with motivating the utterly brainwashed. As one might expect, a good whip hand is indispensable in this job. 
and any Taskmaster provi prides himself on his ability to swing said implement around with gusto. Usually recruited from among criminals, these physical diplomats take great delight in giving orders to the other captives and the sense of authority it gives them. Soprano. So he blocked it with a ward. Armor, physical damage decreased by the amount of armor that the target has. Magical damage is decreased by the amount of resistance the target has. Block, expend it to completely nullify the next physical attack. Spend it to completely nullify the next magical or stress attack. Got it. So this is magic damage. I guess more power. We'll just power up with the zombies. Make room for big boom. Did the zombie just eat that for no damage? No, he took damage. He just has a fuckload of health. Okay, so we're gonna swing twice. Yeah, he blocked one, and now the other one goes through. Okay. Warning shot. Let's stress this guy out. Unlucky. Plus 25 luck against female enemies. I never noticed that with the Bride of Aratus. Okay. Well, that's gonna be a mark. Ah, come on. Give that dude a heart attack. I want a heart attack! Yes! At this point, we're just fucking torturing him. Just end his misery. There you go. Mop up the gore. I'd hate to see plants using it as fertilizer. Uh, digger souls used to construct and improve buildings at the graveyard. Parts needed to craft minions, artifacts can increase the power of your minions and Enratus himself. Additionally, minions that did not participate in a battle restore a small amount of vigor, according to the difficulty level. Scroll of Skullfall unlocks a secret destruction spell. One time use. Deals 12 magic damage to all enemies and sets them on fire for 3 turn. Okay. Equip an Aratus art oh, artifacts. Here we go. There are four main types of artifacts. Weapons, armor, and rings and amulets. You also encounter consumables. Such artifacts only apply for one battle. After which they are spent. At the beginning of the game, the artifact. Uh, oh, Eratus receives one random artifact. I mean. It embellishes my undead features. We don't have enough to actually use this mana? Uh, can I go to Talents? Humanitorium, Graveyard, a 
just the artifacts, huh? Haha, <laughs> disintegrate it for a hundred experience. Alright, back to the dungeon. Can we create more? We can. You will bring me their heads, their hearts, and everything else. Let's get the Dark Knight a spin. We can create one of everything. So we've got a skeleton, zombie, bride, banshee. We need a wraith. Yeah, fuck it. Let's get all minions. Uh, cultists. Uh, sacrificial altar. Oh, this is a big ass map. Alright, to the next battle we go. I guess we can only go in one direction or the other. Resources and magic. Mana needed to use talents from the magic, ire, and destruction trees. Mana is restored after every victory in combat, though minion abilities via... Oh no, through minion ab abilities or via certain encounters on the map. Wrath needed to use the ultimate abilities of your minions. Wrath increases during combat and resets after combat ends. Spell power increases the effectiveness of Erratus talents. Erratus gains one spell power point each level and can further increase it via artifacts, talents, and minion abilities, etc. Oh. Ooh, just fucking whipping his ass. More accuracy and all of that shit. So we are introduced to a new enemy, some sort of spearman. Guard. Guards? Okay, originally were intended to protect the vital trade pass between various towns, but due to rampant corruption, no self-respecting trader would rely on them for protection. Hmm. Instead, they hire their own mercenaries, and the guards are relegated to the most menial and undemanding tasks. Which is exactly how they prefer it. Okay. Alright, well, let's fucking light everything up. Say on the hello to my burning friend. Seven true damage, so go on. Brave are an excellent source of fresh corpses. Uh, astounding fortitude. Mark's a minion has a 100% chance to redirect. The Banshee's pretty squishy, isn't she? She's got 85 life, she'll be fine. Let's just go on the offensive and just go ahead. Hollow stare. Uh, 
Heartless Slash. We'll just slice this dude open. Yeah. One more for the stockpiles. Stances. A type of ability, uh, of ability that some minions and enemies can use in battle. Stances differ in duration. One turn stance. Stance that ends at the start of the next character's turn. Stance until the battle ends. The character will remain in stance until it is cancelled or the battle ends. Any stance can be cancelled via forced movement or stunning. Unless the description of the stance specifies otherwise. Whenever a minion moves, attack it for 100% damage. Okay. Oh, we're already working really decently into his HP, so... I think we ought to change the Banshee. And the skeleton is immune to this buff of wailing for dread. And beating that stress. Armor absorb. His armor was too thick. Oh, we have enough wrath to do a uh, critical hit now. Okay. Berserk increases damage dealt by 25%, damage received by 50%. Two ashes, dust to dust. Alright, can we absorb his fear? Ah, there we go. Oh shit, I forgot, he still got blocks. Two hits. Get rid of the fucking block. Alright, Soprano. And we're gonna probably try and change out the Banshee for something else. There we go. A predictable outcome. Excellent. We got a bunch of stuff. Unlock a new talent. <sighs> Winning battles rewards Aratus with experience that increases his level. At each level, he receives talent points that can be used on the following ability trees. Alchemy, magic, ire, destruction. Yeah. Destruction deals direct damage to enemies. Okay. Uh, minions receive plus three dread. Doesn't work on summoned minions. Whip. 
target minion moves forward two, receives 25% accuracy. So I guess we just, it's just kind of a way of moving minions around. All minions uh, gain two initiative for two actions. Erratus restores an additional five mana after each fight. Alchemy. Increase the amount of digger souls received at the end of battle. Now that this is like architecture and building stuff, see, uh, see uncommon or better parts. Minions restore 100% more vigor when Erratus uses distillation. Iron and destruction. Uh, twenty-five plus one. Oh, magic damage. Okay. Flaming skull and sets him on fire. Physical damage twice in the same target. Bone spear. A muck. Target minion loses 12 luck and gains 6 attack and 6 dread until the end of battle. Blind Fury. Every time a minion misses with an attack, a Ratchet gains 3 wrath. Drums of War! The start of its turn, a minion gains 2 initiative for 2 turns if a Ratchet has. At least 25 rad. Okay. These books don't even have pages made of human skin. Let's go with the architecture buff. Oh wait, we can get more. Kayla just sent me something super nice. When the day arrives, she has planned so well that she has a whole hour for a bath and beauty treatment. Her pretty face is always well cared for. But <clears throat> extra creaming and furnishing or no, furbishing give it that faultless party air that she admires. To wipe the look of strain from her face to whip up the color, to rout any tendency to mental lethargy, she spends half an hour in the beauty angle. Position heels higher than her head. This granted her for her looks, elevating to her spirit. What? No, this is grand for her looks, elevating to her spirit. Oh, I get it. Okay. Well. Most people will just look at me like, what the fuck did you just read, Troy? I don't know. But, it's nice. Increase the chance to receive artifacts at the end Through of battle. transformation, nice. the will becomes free. Gray matter. Now, I was told that brains are pretty important at this battle, or in this game, which is sensible. Brain is a body part, the most important body part. Alright, so now we go. Okay, so that other thing that we just used is gone. Whatever. We got to experience using magic. So there's a battle here, steel here. We can get two battles if we go this way. We can get minions, I guess. We can raise the level of Erratus or the minions. But we can get two battles here, so wouldn't we get experience for Erratus anyways? Oops. Uh, let's just go battle. 
But before we do that, let's switch these corpses around. Let's give Wolfie Boy a try. Hold on. Werewolf, werewolf, werewolf. Uh, yes, you. Swing. Scratch him up. Buff the werewolf. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Should we switch out the skip? Yeah, we'll switch the, switch out Scaly Boy and get the zombie in there. Get him to get some health back. Have the Scaly Boy rest a bit. You can only straight up do physical damage with this guy. But whatever. Gotta choose a squad to battle with. Ah! Oh, fucking bear trap! Ah! Oh, my legs! What did you do to my zombie? He can't fucking move at all. His initiative is gone. He used to have three. Well, I guess our zombie doesn't get a turn on the first turn. Fuck! Wow, initiative is nine for the world. All right, let's let's figure out what we're gonna do here. You've got 95 HP, 75, 80, 90. You like to do that guarding shit, don't you? You can damn near kill the dude yourself. No, the werewolf is pretty fucking good at hunting people down. The guys who sit in the back row. Chest pierce. My kind of entertainment. That deals magic damage, right? You know what? Let's get some more powder. Buff up. Yeah, there we go. Buff. Get that chunk ready. Get that beef. Hey, zombie boy. How much, uh, how much wrath do you need for that? 60? We'll see if we can get up to 60. Damage though. 
ambush at the beginning of... I want to use the cannon. Oh, I want to... Oh, I, oh, I want to smack him. Whenever an enemy... A minion moves. So, if I buff right now, he's going to move forward. So, we just... Fucking double crit. Ah! Use Abyssal Hunger on the Dark Knight, but he's yet to take damage since we started combat. The Dark Knight can't be damaged. Twenty-eight thirty-two damage. I mean, why not? Fucking boom! Oh, I feel so fucking dumb. I forgot about the goddamn ward. What a waste. All of that build up just to fucking oof like that. Oh well. Are you guys sure that I'm not the zombie here? Really fucking digging into my zombie. A sad display for mortal kind. <laughs> sad display for me. Setting it all of that fucking setup and I forgot about. Improve a minion by using a brain. Minions ev can evolve and be improved in multiple ways. Leveling grants a minion stat and- <laughs> Oh god, excuse me. Skill points. Every minion level gets two stat points for improving stats. Every third level grants a minion one skill point for upgrading abilities. Okay, so third level is where we can get one of those skills to the left or right. And every level is just stats. Using parts of a higher quality grants a minion additional stat points. Parts grafted onto a minion can be improved by a digger souls. Items provide your minions with additional features. Receiving buffs and debuffs from minions. Items doesn't trigger any effects. Grafting a brain instantly gives minion additional experience. Well, gotta put our zombie back and let's give a better brain to the uh, skeleton boy here. Yes. Alright. What we got, skeleton boy? Fucking instant kill sounds nasty, man. And for each buff on the target, we can get so fucking lucky. Embrace, no, endless mediocrity. Strength of mediocrity. Uh, grants them four attack and four dread until the end of battle. Mystic fortitude. Stance, marks a minion, uh, redirect any attack. Eighteen armor and eighteen resistance. Gains twelve armor and twelve resistance. Strikes back when attacked, dealing one hundred percent stress damage. He's not really. We're not. He's not in a stress damage composition right now. I could make one, but uh, save some body parts for a few more minions. Huh? We got some points to upgrade here. Um. More attack, I guess. We got a uh, werewolf, huh? 
armor. Resistance. Oh, you can't upgrade the vigor of the uh, werewolf. He's stuck at 75 vigor. Interesting. So, maybe we can... Uh... Okay. Upgrade the armor of the werewolf a little bit. This guy's got so much fucking armor and resistance. Uh, max HP. Accuracy. Let's do that. I don't like missing. Luck. Evasion. Luck is good for everyone. He can't be critically hit. But he can critical hit others. So luck is still useful to him. Uh, we're gonna start guarding a lot with a skeleton, so... Armor. Resistance, I guess. With him. Oh, we can really fucking... Okay. Man, that brain is good! Serve me well, my minion. Smite. Uh, endless mediocrity. Forceful lesson. Interrupts stances. Okay, so this just makes it do full damage. What's this do? Stuns the target for one turn. This ignores block and armor. Man, this 4% chance is My to enemies kill. are in for a nasty surprise. This uh, skeleton, he's going to be able to tank it up for, I don't know, somebody if they're getting their asses handed to him. Okay, well, we spent our points. No, we got talent points. Nothing that we really want to do with our talent points as of right now save them to get gray matter, unless there's uncommon or better parts. Uh, no? Surgical practice increases the chance to receive uncommon or better parts. Minions receive six luck. Minions gain eight vigor. We'll save up to get more brains. Brains are really goddamn good. We can get another zombie, another bride of Erratus. I guess a second bride wouldn't be so bad. They're pretty versatile. Oh, it's a level three. Okay. Yeah, I want to play around with a stress composition, so... What can we do to stress the enemies out, huh? Do we need another skeleton? What do we need here? Wraith. We can move our Dark, dark Knight over. Uh, wh what position does the Wraith want to be in? Cold Grass, Necrotic Wind...
Evolution, Ghostly Veil, Terror Wave. Ghostly Fire. I mean, this is alright, I guess. Where is the Bride of Erratus? Bride of Erratus, if we just use Warning Shot, it's always going to be on the left. Interrupts stances, ignores ward. Target can't move for two rounds. We'll just ignore ward with it. Now, prove yourself worthy of my investment. Uh, this one will get dread, okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Luck? Always. Lucky. So we've got a Dread Bride, and we've got a uh, Attacking Bride. Okay. It sounds fair enough to me. This Dark Knight's pretty versatile. He can go in a Stress Comp or uh, other compositions. So, where's the Banshee want to be? Scream. Whenever an enemy moves, the Banshee deals stress. Absorb fear. All minions gain 14 dread for their next action. Whale sounds like it'd be really good in this group. Soprano. Howl. Oh! Right. She can stun. Well, it seems like, uh, the... The Banshee wants to be at rank 3 and 4, for the most part. She can be anywhere, but I'm guessing that she will be attacked less often. This guy starts with 2 block and 2 ward, so... He's gonna be alright. And the Dark Knight can be at the front, just get smacked by everything and never take damage. Alright, let's try stressing out some of our enemies. Did we get any artifacts? No, we didn't. Alright, let's try to get some people to lose their minds. At the beginning of the next turn, uh, we'll deal 195% physical damage to a random target. Interrupts stances. That's a stance. Yes! Alright, it worked! Everybody gets the stress buff now. Twenty seven to twenty nine. I mean, we can break this guy. Insane, right? Yes! Alright, he's crazy. 40%! All remaining strength at the start of each turn loses 40% of his maximum vigor. Jesus Christ. He just got an extra action off that. That kind of backfired a little bit.
this guy should die, right? Nobody can hit the, the ghost? Does he have crazy evasion or something? What's his evasion? 5%? Alright, well those guys must have shit accuracy. 91%, not shit. 92%. Uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely not shit. Your frail bodies fail you. Cowardice. The chance to flee increases by 20% each turn. Before the beginning of the turn, deal stress damage to all allies equal to 20%. 5% for bosses of their current remaining sanity. Break him. Alright, no, you know what? Let's make this guy. Oh, not enough damage. Hey, this is kind of fun fucking with enemies. Terror wave. Oh. Fucking bear trap. Ah, stabbing the banshee. Heart attack, please. Good, good. More materials. Ooh, I didn't think it would be this easy. Hollow stairs. And ghostly fire. <laughs> Why do you not die? Maybe if we concentrate the damage more? There we go. Man, that banshee is really getting fucked. I'll use my wrath to heal the Dark Knight a little bit. Ghostly fire? Just die already! Betrayal. <laughs> He's already attacking his allies. Please. Ah, what the fuck? <laughs> this never gets old. There we go. Digger souls. We got 50. Uh, graveyard. After attaining freedom, Eratus turned his prison into a base of operations. Graveyard buildings require minions and a special resource in order to construct them. Uh. Library? We require a dark knight for that. We require a wraith for that. D 
Do they all cost 25? Erratus gains 40 of experience and 8% of experience of the level from the current level. Excavation. 50% chance for each minion working at the excavation site to find a random part. Uh, abode of Rye. Praising the Necromancer restores 10 mana. Okay, so we can get mana restore. Restores 100% vigor each after each battle. Arena. Wow. Sounds like the arena uh, would be really good, but the obelisk would be really good, too. Library? I don't know. Obelisk would, would be pretty good, wouldn't it? But arena and library early on could be some really good level ups. That said, we need digger souls, don't we? To get any of this going, so no matter what, we've got to get this. Okay. Here's our rate. The obelisk is overflowing with souls. My continued campaign certainly provides it with no shortage of spirits to harvest. Do we need another one? Our Dark Knight is pretty good. I don't know, can we construct another one? Yes, we can. Hardly an inspiring leader, but the dead care not for morale. In short, while I have managed to gather every scrap of significant mortal knowledge down here, it's about as dull as you'd imagine. Okay, uh, let's see. Wraith, fill this up. Get our Wraith back. Alchemy. Eratus is proficient in several alchemical disciplines. Transmutation, turn one type into another. Distillation, spend parts, brains, or items to gain vigor for minions. Extraction, creating items from valuable parts. And calcination, so you can gain mana. Oh, wait. So we can... Oh! Reduces physical damage. Received. Increases physical damage dealt. Um, crit damage. Received. Okay. Reduces all damage received by 5%. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, you can continue the current game on Cakewalk or restart on More Pain. Or Good Always Wins difficulty. Okay. Let's go back to the main menu, and I think that concludes the tutorial. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before we do that, I need to see something. I need to see if this... Do I... Okay, so I have a minion in there, right? It's not... It's not gone now, but I do have a minion in there. Okay. I think I kind of understand now. Let's see, let's just see what this quest is, since we worked so hard to get to it. Uh... 
as you progress upon your journey toward your rightful dominance, you encounter an impressive mustering of resistance, a massive shuffling of feet, and your undead host comes across an even larger host of humans. <clears throat> a single dwarf taskmaster is at, at the head, grinning with darkened teeth as he whips his thralls against you. For the first time in a long time, you realize that you are outnumbered. I have a skeleton right here. Is it because I don't have a skeleton in the party? Alright, well, let's do battle. Break them! Well, if we want to break them, we should probably break their leader, right? Start with the strongest. Hopeless. Minus 25 luck, decreases damage dealt by 50%, loses all blocks. Not uh, loses all the blocks, removes all ward, loses all armor and resistance. Oh! Oh, that hurt. A lot. I think I'm gonna Soprano because the other three enemies are about to take their turns in rapid succession and. <laughs> Our Banshee is at, like, half health. I think I made a good call. Oh, five accuracy and five evasion each turn until the end of combat. He just buffed for more armor, but he doesn't get any because he's hopeless. You're next. Break them. Break them all. Betrayal. Okay, so once again, these guys are all gonna take their turn. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep debuffing their damage. Use to move back. Absorb fear. Strength through pain. Uh, what? But wait, 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 wait. I wanted to move. Oh, son of a fucking bitch. I was thinking it was working like Darkest Dungeon, and I wanted to move the... God damn it. I thought it was a position swap sort of thing going on here.
Welp. That guy gets full sanity due to my own errors, but that's fine. We haven't really damaged his sanity very much. Hopeless. So, this is what a thousand years of evolution looks like? Yeah, pathetic. Jesus fucking Christ, the Dark Knight is literally unkillable. I haven't... He hasn't even taken damage for the past oh. several battles. So we're definitely gonna have to turn the difficulty up for, uh... For this. But this was a good introduction. Terror wave. Uh, Soprano. Oh, there's one. Death delivered. Stuck the kill. Another step towards my eternal kingdom. Leg cuffs. The minion can't be moved. Bundle of dynamite. At the beginning of combat, all enemies lose 35 to 45 vigor. Ignores ward one time use. Humanitorium token. Ha 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 ha. We got a skeleton and a banshee for that. All right, so we got our digger souls from that, and I think we got experience for a Rattus, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, oh God, chamber of Eratus. There were one. Uh, Eratus himself. Artifacts, I guess. Um, oh wow, we gained a level for that. So we can get the brain thing now. The formulae reveal their secrets. Ah, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool. So, now that we've done all of that, and I understand that building it uh, puts a minion in there. So you don't need to build it and then build another minion to put it in there. Because that's... It's unfair. It's too much. But everything costs 25 to start, so... Alright. What does it cost to upgrade? 50. Okay. Well, we're gonna raise up the difficulty and leave this as a tutorial, so that way we understand. So, yeah. Awesome. Great. Thanks for watching.